This video is part of Firm Theory Cost. In it, I'll show you how to mathematically derive the demand functions for labor and capital. Remember from my labor demand video that every point on a labor demand curve tells us the cost minimizing amount of labor the firm will demand to minimize the cost of producing some level of output as the wage rate varies, holding the rental rate constant. The labor demand function is a mathematical equation that shows how a firm's cost minimizing quantity of labor varies with the price of labor, the price of capital, and the output level. The labor demand curve is looking at the relationship between just two variables, the cost minimizing amount of labor and the price of labor holding the rental rate and output levels constant. On the other hand, the labor demand function is a mathematical equation that tells us the relationship between the cost minimizing level of labor and the wage rate, rental rate, and output level. The capital demand function is a mathematical expression that shows how a firm's cost minimizing amount of capital varies with the price of capital, the price of labor, and the output level. Graphically, if we, if we draw a capital demand curve, we are looking at the relationship just between the cost minimizing amount of capital and the price of capital, and so holding the wage rate and output level constant. I'll show you an example next. Consider the following Cobb-Douglas production function. Q equals 50 times L to the 0.5 times K to the 0.5. To see where the labor and capital demand functions come from, remember that each tells us the cost minimizing amount of an input. So we want to start with the first step from cost minimization. That is, when a firm is minimizing the cost of producing some level of output, the slope of its ISO quant, called the MRTS, equals the slope of its ISO cost, called the MRT. So that's where we're going to begin. The marginal rate of technical substitution is the ratio of marginal products. The marginal product of labor divided by the marginal product of capital. Here, the MRTS simplifies to K over L. We're going to set that equal to the MRT, which is the input price ratio, specifically the price of labor over the price of capital. Now, unlike when we wanted to find a cost minimizing bundle for some input prices, here we don't want to set these input prices equal to any values. Instead, we want to keep this more general. We're trying to see how the cost minimizing amount of each input would vary with the input prices, so we're going to use simply W and R and not plug in numbers. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply and solve for one of the inputs. I'm picking capital. Now we're going to plug this expression for capital into the production function. Cost minimization is when the firm is trying to choose inputs that have the lowest cost of producing some level of output. So output is the constraint into which I plug K equals W over R times L. Output equals 50 L to the 0.5 times K to the 0.5. But now instead of K, I'm substituting that K equals W over R times L. I'm going to go ahead and distribute this, this exponent through the parentheses to give me 50L to the 0.5, W over R to the 0.5, times L to the 0.5. Because I have L in two different places, I'm going to simplify by combining these terms. And here, L to the 0.5 times L to the 0.5 is L to the 0.5 plus 0.5, which is L to the 1. So Q equals 50 times W over R to the 0.5 times L. I'm almost there, and I'm going to solve this for labor. So I have L equals Q over 50 times W over R to the 0.5, which is equivalent to Q over 50 
times r over w to the 0.5. So there you have it. This is an equation that tells me the cost minimizing amount of labor the firm will demand for any values of the wage rate, the rental rate, and level of output. Now let's look at how we would find the demand for capital. One way that we can do this is to go back up and see here that capital equals W over R times L. So let's start with that. We know that capital equals W over R times L, where L is this. L is Q over 50 times R over W to the 0.5. W and, w and R appear in two places here, so I can simplify. Here I have K equals Q over 50 times W over R to the 1 times R over W to the 0.5, which becomes Q over 50 times W over R to the 0.5. This is the equation that tells us the cost minimizing amount of capital the firm will demand for any values of the rental rate, the wage rate, and output. These steps are summarized on the Driving Input Demand Help Sheet. To recap, first we derive the MRTS from the production function. Then we set it equal to the input price ratio. If our goal is to solve for labor demand, at this point we'd want to solve for capital. However, do note that if our goal had been instead to solve for capital demand, at this point we would have first solved for labor. Step three is to plug the expression for capital into the production function and then solve for labor. That's how we derive the demand function for labor. Just like in consumer theory, when, when we have quasi-linear production, the steps are going to look a little bit different. That's because for quasi-linear production, just like we saw for quasi-linear utility, but for production, the MRTS is a function of only one of the inputs. Solving for that input's demand doesn't require the production function itself. Let me take a step back. First, just like before, we're going to derive the MRTS. Then, just like before, we're going to set it equal to the input price ratio. Unlike before, at this point when we solve for labor, we have labor's demand function. That is, we never had to go to the production function to get the demand for labor. Labor demand here is not a function of output. The amount of labor that the firm will demand to minimize cost is independent of the level of output. The firm's going to demand the same quantity of labor for all levels of output. Again, in the case of quasi-linear production, the MRTS is a function of only one input, and therefore the demand for that input will not be a function of output.